Hello everyone and welcome back to Once Upon a Galaxy. I am Duke Silver. Today we're going to be playing This Little Piggy. Uh, this Little Piggy's captain power is every time you level up you get a bonus shop. So, um, pretty basic power, but uh, but pretty po it can be pretty powerful. I mean, if it lets you uh, lets you see more silvers or potentially more treasures in the shop. Uh, if you can, uh, I mean, if you're if you're if you're fortunate enough with your shops. Uh, we start off with the piston boots here, and then also a rose. The rose is going to increase the uh, the health of all the characters in our shop. Uh, I'm like I like taking a rose or a thorn uh, nice and early here. Usually, like you can you can make up the uh, the the half heart you potentially lose on turn one uh, with like a picks here, as you can see that we just we have just taken. Um, looks like opponent playing pretty bold, playing two uh, zero power characters um, on turn two. Even if one of them are pickles, it's uh, it's not great. Um, also, we took an egg on turn two. That's gonna flip into uh, into an epic character once we uh, we turn into a, a rare shop on turn five. So uh, I think a turn two turn two egg is like pretty good. Um, especially, I mean, especially if you have a, like a decently strong start. And I think uh, I think a picks makes you pretty strong for the first few uh, first few turns here. I'm gonna go with a meat in a tavern there over anything in the shop. We get a Katamari and we're gonna immediately silver that Katamari. I do like Mecha Man quite a bit. Um, I mean, the, the uncommon supports are uh, are not bad either. Once again, I think I think we're just gonna go for a random uh, random character instead of what's in the shop. And we get a Kid Icarus, which is, uh, which is pretty good if you can get it, uh, get it golden, of course. Um, I haven't, I still haven't been able to get it golden, but uh, but in theory, it's good because <laughs> you get, of course, you get a treasure from it. Um, looks like we could take a, we could take a silver puss in boots here, or we have another, an option for another meat in the tavern, um, for uh, for an uncommon character. But I mean, the silver character just lets us see another shop. Uh, I'm just struggling with whether I want to play it on board. It, it is, I guess, technically, it's better than the pan shadow, so. It's probably a mistake to just not uh, not put that on the board over the pan shadow. Uh, and we're also going to take a Peter Pan here, and we find a golden egg. So that's going to be a golden epic character next turn. Uh, we haven't taken any damage here either, so uh, so we're feeling pretty good about that. Uh, breadcrumbs is very good, but I decide, you know what? I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty strong, so uh, I, I think next turn even we're going to be in an even better position. So I go for the. Uh, Go for the secret map, assuming that we can make it to turn 12. And we get a golden Daisy Jones here. Uh, so Daisy Jones is going to trigger uh, any last breaths uh, behind her whenever she uh, whenever she uh, hunts. So like, I mean, obviously, if you want to like go for max value, get two, uh, two farewell abilities behind her in slot two, but there's no guarantee she gets to attack like that. So the safe play is to just put her in one. And I think we're gonna do that. We don't we don't have any farewell abilities right now. I mean, Kid Icarus is a farewell ability. So if we again, if we can get that golden, then we can get a couple treasures out of that ability. Um, but uh, yeah, basically we just need to pick up a, a farewell ability <laughs> this turn if we uh, if we can. It looks like we're not gonna be able to, um, but we still we we want to get Daisy Jones hunting because she does get bigger for each hunt. So uh, we definitely want to get her into uh, into slot one over the Katamari. As much as I like Katamari being able to attack uh, first and get those stats, I think uh, I think getting Daisy Jones, keeping keeping Daisy Jones big enough to keep slaying is uh, is much more important. And we win, uh, win that combat pretty handily with Daisy Jones still standing there. Only 4-4 four, four per, uh, per slay, so I mean it's the same thing as kind of an Ann Bunny, and like getting an Ann Bunny uh, slaying at this stage is pretty good. We do pick up a farewell character in, uh, in Punxsutawney Phil, but Honestly, uh, it's not really the one that you necessarily want to be putting behind Daisy Jones. Like, it's fine, but uh, especially if, uh, if if she's er, in slot one, when she's attacking in slot one, you're not going to get too much value out of that fill. Um, but we did get a mechanical dragon, so we're going to be able to uh, to get two claws. Because, uh, go sorry, golden Daisy Jones does trigger the farewell abilities twice. So, um, it's a little bit harder to get value out of summons in slot one. But, uh, but something like a mechanical dragon, we're going to be able to uh, to accrue some treasures. Although we do kind of have a dilemma here. Um, we, have the, we have a choice to TLK into a golden legendary. I mean, we could TLK something else, but... Or even a bronze goose is a fine pickup in this shop, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a struggle because like we could we could keep slaying with Daisy Jones, but uh, like we're not guaranteed to get the slays. Like 28 is decent, but this is around the time in the game when people's um, power levels are going to start to really spike. So, uh, 
I think uh, I think eventually we are going to decide on this TLK to uh, into a legendary, a golden legendary, just to uh, potentially get something uh, something uh, really worthwhile here. I also considered considered it on the fill just to get a roll of random uh, epic, which would be fine, I suppose. Although, like, I think Bronze Goose is probably just a better take than that. And yeah, you can tell I really, uh, really struggled with this decision, and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it does not pay off here. Uh, we get a data list, so um, kind of the worst possible, uh, worst po maybe maybe worst possible thing. That means we're never going to see a data list in the shop, and data list's ability is a recruit ability, of course. So unfortunately, uh, we're never going to get those recruit uh, sl st slot bonuses. Uh, eventually, we just pick up a scarecrow here, and then basically we're going to hope to uh, to get a treasure out of it. Um, opponent has a golden Punxsutawney fill. Fortunately, our fill gets a little bit more value than theirs, and we still win the combat. So fortunately, I mean Daisy Jones would have kept uh, kept slaying, but I mean hindsight's twenty twenty and all that. Uh, we could take 10 million fireflies and start uh, start beefing up uh, potential potential fey that we could pick up. Although, like, we don't have any fey in our um, on our board right now, so it's uh, I'm less inclined to uh, to want to take it. Although it's still bigger than a few different things on our board. Uh, Ninja and training also a pretty good one. I mean, uh, sneak and ranged is uh, is a pretty potent combination. Sometimes taking out a support or like a mop or something is really really important. So I think ninja and training is very good. Eventually, I do decide to go with the uh, Meet in a Tavern. That's also two cards for the Scarecrow quest, which is uh, definitely something we want to get done. And another two cards for the Scarecrow quest here is uh, is going to be three bags full. We get the spell and the uh, card, and we find our way to another TLK. So, in retrospect, um, that first TLK that didn't yield anything actually ends up kind of worth it. It kind of, kind of ends up uh, ends up ends up being very good for us as we uh, we do get to. Uh, to turn our, our useless Daedalus into uh, a very very useful Golden Storm Nebula, so that's gonna that's gonna improve er, in, uh, enhance the amount of casts that we get. Now we have the choice between Lost in the Woods and Two Headed Wizard, and I mean I'm feeling kind of spicy, so we take the Two Headed Wizard. We also have a Drafty Window um, that we picked up uh, pretty early. That means that we're gonna get double uh, double spell casts out of our uh, Two Headed Giant uh, recruit trigger. Uh, we have the choice between Gloves of Thieving and Pandora's Box. I think I like the gloves a little bit more. It just gives us a little bit of extra value um, longer term. Although, like a legendary, a legendary treasure can be really, really powerful. But there also also are some whiffs. So, so I go for the uh, go for the 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 Gloves of Thieving. Um, it also it also gives us a potential to uh, to sort of even the odds against uh, against an opponent that's high rolling. So like if they if they hit like a really powerful treasure, then maybe we can uh, we can also hit their powerful treasure, maybe even multiple times with the amount of hearts we have. Uh, we go for the spell spellbook punch card is really really good, especially with Thor uh, Storm Nebula, because I mean every the first spell we cast is going to be uh, twice is going to go go twice, so um, that's going to be uh, that's going to be a, almost a guaranteed extra um, extra shop every turn. All right, opponents, <laughs> opponents, uh, chameleon slays into uh, Storm Nebula. Um, so fortunate, uh, some fortunate uh, chameleon slays uh, today. This is, I mean, this is from the same stream as uh, the last video that I posted, uh, where uh, our, our chameleon slayed into a uh, what was it? I think it was a ghost armor. But yeah, anyways, it slayed into a secret rare character that uh, it was Tiamat. Sorry, no Tiamat, of course. Um, it's been a couple days since I uh, since I made a video. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we have another option for a TLK, um, or we could take Sorcerer's Mop, but I decided to go for the double TLK here on uh, on the the Magnificent. Uh, it's not only going to pop our uh, our Spellbook Punch card; it's also going to get us another Secret Rare. I mean, Mop with what Punxsutawney Phil is very good, but I figured just getting another Secret Rare would be very good, and we get Pirate King. Pirate King is a is an excellent uh, card here, as long as we can get Slaying, especially with the amount of treasures that we're getting. Uh, as long as we can get some slays, um, we're going to be in very good shape. As we're going to, it's going to add treasure hoard and uh, and stats to every character that we have. And yeah, we do uh, we do manage to uh, to win this combat handily, making our storm nebula quite large. We've also got a second uh, second drafty window, which uh, which is going to come up in uh, in just a moment here. Uh, maybe not this turn, but maybe the the following turn. <laughs> Um, we could take greed, give a character treasure hoard. That's a decent amount of stats. That's probably, 
I mean, it's probably what I should do. Although, like, then that kind of burns our Storm Nebula thing. So I, I thought that maybe we could do better. Um, we don't do much better. I think I think the greed was better than giant growth with the amount of treasures that we have and the amount of treasures that we're going to continue to get. But we're going to go for the double uh, double cast on uh, on giant's growth here, on giant growth. Sorry, um, and then get our extra shop from the punch card. We can take a mixo macho, which is nice, and we're going to throw it on the kraken. Hope the kraken uh, gets big enough to uh, to slay. I mean, like, the Kraken Slays aren't, like, a huge deal at this point. Like, the Pirate King is definitely giving us uh, more power overall. But, I mean, we still want to get those, uh, we still want to get those Slays. Alright, we steal a Lucky Chest from an opponent, so that's actually kind of huge. If we can get, like, a Legendary Treasure, uh, convert that into a Secret Rare, uh, that's going to be very powerful. Once again, we're going to reroll the spell and see if we can do better. Unfortunately, we don't do much better. We, we got the Double Presence here. Uh, we do want to get our bonus shop though, so we, we are going to cast it um, over uh, ba over banking one of these uh, these cards in the shop, which aren't going to play on board. Titania, it's a little bit late for Titania. We don't have animals for uh, for Guardian, and yeah, at this point, I mean, we're just we're kind of invested in the board that we have. Oh, I guess I I guess I decided to uh, to bank. We had oh yeah, we, we had one more shop. That's uh, that's probably why I decided that. Um. Also, I don't rem remember, uh, I didn't, I didn't see if our, our, if our secret map turned into a legendary treasure. I mean, it probably did. I just kind of glossed over it. Um, we did, we didn't, so, so sorry, the, uh, the drafty window did, uh, did come up there. Um, I just kind of glossed over it, but we did get to take a silver, uh, two-headed, uh, wizard, which gave us three extra spell casts, as you can see in the bottom right there. So that's pretty huge. Um... So we could we could just cast a whole bunch of spoonfuls of sugar, but that doesn't seem great. We could also cast a whole bunch of um, meat meat in the taverns because that would be all those triggers in the bottom right plus our storm nebula trigger. But uh, we do have this lucky chest, which I do want to use for a secret rare. So we're gonna we're gonna use that. The, we're gonna take the titania here and take our secret rare instead. Uh, we don't have a merlin, otherwise mirror uh, wonder box would be fantastic here um, with all those extra spell casts. I mean, world shrub is good. But we don't really have anything that cares about uh, card types right now, so I think the the option is just the Trifork here. I mean, that's going to give our characters a, uh, a little boost in stats and make our subsequent treasures, uh, our future treasure uh, hits, uh, a lot better. We take out their Medusa before they can attack, and uh, combat goes well enough for us. We keep uh, we keep taking out this opponent's Storm Nebula. The Storm Nebula seems to be uh, in a subpar position for them though, so if they put it in slot five, then they definitely have a better shot. Um, we did take another lucky chest, which we're going to burn on the two-headed wizard because we need to, to get those uh, those extra spell casts. Look how many extra casts we're going to have this turn. That's going to be uh, it's going to be wild. We're going to take the double farewell abilities. Of course, we have Trifork, so we get to take all three of these. Although they're pretty inconsequential, uh, we could uh, we could cast a thousand True Love's Kiss here, but that doesn't really help beyond like uh, the third or fourth one. Um, so I think we're just going to bank a character and uh, and hope for something a little bit better uh, next turn. I mean, we're at three hearts. We can afford to be greedy. I think we're uh, we're still we're we're in pretty good shape to uh, to to take the lobby here, just uh, just on with the board that we have. So we might as well uh, might as well hold out. Once again, opponents should have that Storm Nebula in five. Not entirely sure why they uh, what what the choice was there. This was a live lobby as well, as I said earlier. We uh, this was uh, this was on stream. Um, and yeah, we finally find a, a spell that we really want to copy, and that's going to be an over the rainbow, which we're going to cost, we're going to cast, sorry, I think it's like seven times, eight, nine, something like that. <laughs> it's a lot anyways. And, uh, and, and yeah, as you can see, the numbers with, uh, casting over the rainbow that many times, uh, get a little bit silly. We're going to pick an 86,000, 86,000 fairy queen up. Um, the reason that one's so much bigger than the other two is because we have it on board. So over the rainbow, if you find a silver character or a gold character, it will multiply the stats of the character that's on board already. So, so that's why Fairy Queen is so absurdly large there. And uh, and yeah, I think uh, I think an 86,000, 86,000 uh, character is going to be enough to uh, to seal the deal. We moved it out of the slot uh, slot five there, and then the slot five did get hit by uh, by the combat spell by the um, stroke of midnight. And uh, so yeah, we're we're kind of fortunate. I mean, I think I think I think we're in good shape. Even even if that thing gets uh, gets taken out, I mean, we got lots of lots of time, lots of help. Uh, but still, the uh, the foresight, the foresight to to make <laughs> to move it uh, or something. 
All right, we, we have a really, really big shops here. Um, I could uh, I could replace like the I mean, I guess I kind of want to keep the Pirate King, but uh, but I could potentially uh, replace uh, replace something on our board here. I'd like we're going into the last combat. So uh, so replacing uh, replacing Pirate King would have actually been fine. We're not going to get a ton more stats out of uh, out of one slay. So getting adding an extra 200 200 to the board could be uh, could be worth it. Uh, speaking of stats, like I'm, I'm considering replacing the Kraken with the Spirit Dragon, but ultimately decided against it. And yeah, we get a we cast meet meet in the tavern a whole bunch of times here, and you can see uh, you can see we just get like a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of extra shops. Eventually, I did did uh, did replace the uh, the Kraken with a uh, Captain Hook. Captain Hook has just slightly more stats, but the effect is uh, certainly more powerful. We get to take find another epic treasure at this point we're kind of just spinning our wheels like we're so far ahead that uh i think uh, i think people in chat were getting a little bit annoyed <laughs> they're like okay it's fine you win we get it <laughs> and uh hard to blame them on that but uh i was just kind of just kind of lost <laughs> lost in the sauce there uh just ha having a good time uh building up those numbers casting casting a billion spells uh but yeah ultimately uh we did we do get the victory here opponent uh Almost had a had a last minute scam there with a with Spirit Dragon popping out of Medusa, but um, our our RNG uh, works well enough that uh, it doesn't hit our our giant character. Not that we wouldn't win, but without it either way, uh, I think we were we were significantly uh, ahead, or at least at least ahead enough that we could get scam, we get our big character scammed and still win. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Uh, I hope that was enjoyable. Uh, please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I would really really appreciate that. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.